<laughs> All right, Anthony on Air Podcast, back for another episode. Brought to you by Hero Soap Company. That's the back, here's the front. <laughs> Greatest soap I have ever had. Now, it'll make you smell good. It'll make you feel clean. It won't make you smart enough to put the front of the package facing forward. That they can't help you with. Frankie C is here with us, and we're talking about Ghislaine Maxwell. Uh, prosecutors responded to her bail request today, plus... Her secret marriage might be coming to a secret ending. We'll get into that in a second. Um, Mariah Carey has an unauthorized ornament that is captivating the internet. And uh, Mike Pence has named the Space Force employees. That'll be interesting for everybody. Ringo Starr put out a new track today with Paul McCartney, Dave Grohl, Sheryl Crow, and others. Very cool stuff there. And The Mandalorian, everybody's talking about it, of course. Our own resident Star Wars expert, Frankie C, will right. have some, uh, some stuff to say about that. And I will basically contribute nothing there. You will tune out. And everybody interested, all eyes right here. <laughs> all right, so uh, today... Oh, by the way, programming note, Monday, Conspiracy Theory episode. Very Ooh. cool. Wednesday Christmas special. Christmas special. Yeah, we're gonna do a Christmas special. Even I didn't know about this. There you go. I was supposed to tell you about that before the show started. Okay. Hey, we're doing a Christmas special. <laughs> so look out for that. Programming note: Conspiracy theory show on Monday. Share this episode with a conspiracy theorist in your life, uh, and uh, Christmas episode on Wednesday. So uh, send in your favorite Christmas stories, and maybe we'll talk about a couple on the air. Tweet at I'm us. Put it in the comments. I'll talk about it. I'll talk about a good story. Uh, prosecutors today said Ghislaine Maxwell um, should remain in jail and urged the federal judge hearing this uh, uh, motion uh, to reject her proposal for a $28.5 million bail package. Uh, in a filing with the U.S. Court District Court in Manhattan, prosecutors said that Maxwell essentially rehashed previously rejected arguments for bail that she remains at extreme flight risk and is incredibly uh, from incredibly serious charges. Prosecutors said, quote, nothing in the renewed bail application alters the analysis that led this court to conclude that the defendant poses a substantial actual flight risk and that no combination of conditions could assure her appearance, prosecutors said. Um, she's proposing living in a New York City residence with an electronic bracelet under 24-hour guard to ensure that she does not flee. I mean, does anybody trust that? This is like, I feel like, Frank, in the horror movie when somebody starts running up the stairs instead of out the door in the house, and you're yeah. like, no, what are you doing? <laughs> well, what's the point then? I mean, if you're if you're locked in a, in a room under guard, lock and key, wearing a bracelet, just stay in jail. Say what? Well, slide a TV in there. Uh, you make a good point, What's but I difference? guess I guess there's a difference in the bed, and she can you know drop a deuce in, in a real bathroom in private. She's well, not wearing paper maybe, clothes. Well, if she's under 24 hour surveillance, maybe there should be like a. I'm not saying she should get this, but I'm saying maybe there could be like a, a, a diff. Like maybe there, there's two extremes here. Either you get you're in jail, or you're out on bail. But in the middle, maybe there should be like, um, all right, you're in jail, but you get your own private toilet. Maybe there's, you know, some grades in the middle. Well, I mean, I think there are lower security prisons, but they didn't take her there. They no, took no, her no. to the. No. She should be under back security. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, if she, you know, makes a certain certain amount of her bail, let's say she only pays 10 percent of her bail, then she gets, you know, a TV or whatever. Yeah, you know, or she gets, uh, you know, uh, a yo-yo, whatever the hell they want to give. Me. I don't know. <laughs> Excuse, I don't. Here's your yo-yo, Glenn. You're doing all right. Yeah. There you go. But you it, paid ten mil. But I, so, I feel like we don't know what to believe because in one report we hear she's wearing paper clothes and they're waking her up every fifteen minutes, and then the last report we have was she has the highest honor you could possibly bestow upon an inmate which is you get to watch the other inmates and make sure that they're not uh, make, making suicide, committing suicide or anything like that. So I, I don't even know what to believe anymore with these reports that so are what, coming out of the prison. So what is she, she's sitting at, what is she sitting in her jail cell, looking at TV monitors, watching 
the rest of the inmates not kill themselves? No, I don't know. I don't know if they're letting her out and she just checks on every like it's her job to walk around and check on everybody or I I'm not I don't know. I really don't know. I wish I had I think an that would be like the security guard's job. Why would they give that job to any inmate? <laughs> you would think so. I but I, but I think they do that in prisons. They kind of give you all little tasks and stuff. And... Yeah, you know, librarian, maybe scoop out the mashed potatoes. But checking in to see if someone committed suicide, I feel like you know, you know what, you're a warden for the day. This we're gonna make this inmate. You know, uh, maybe he'll they'll be in charge of all the security guards. And I mean, there's got to be a job that you can't give to inmates, right? I mean. Yeah, but I would say, but my, I would think that, you know, it's funny that you said scoop out the mashed potatoes. I would think that the food prep would be the most, the highest, like, responsibility thing that you could get. Or the mail. Like, isn't mail a big deal? You know? I guess. I mean, the highest responsibility would be, I think, to, is to be like a guard, to be in charge of watching the inmates, that they don't fight, that they don't yeah. get into any kind of trouble. Maybe that's I what mean, she's doing. And that's that's what they're giving her. I, that's what the that's what the last report said. It's in the last podcast. We'll we'll put a link. Are they understaffed? I don't. They were when you know they what? were put, when Epstein was in here. there. Can you put it right here, <laughs> right in between my hands? I don't know if you could do it, but right here. It'd be awesome if I could reach my hand into your little box there. I don't even know where it. There it is. <laughs> that's the way. <laughs> but. I just think they, there are some jobs that inmates shouldn't have. This is why our ventriloquist act failed. This is why we had to go to the podcast. because we One just... of the reasons. <laughs> Difference of, you know, creative differences I would chalk it up to, too. Yeah, and I want you sticking your hand up my ass. All right, before we get to the next part of the Ghislaine story, Hero Soap Company, best soap I've ever had, no joke, uh, made my whole entire bathroom and bedroom smell amazing. There you go. It's for true Americans. I would go as far to say is if you're not buying Hero Soap and you're using like Dial or Irish Spring, you hate America. That's what I would I would almost That's that's something. I feel it feels like you're on the anti American side of things. That's a bold statement, my friend. A big leap, but I feel pretty good about it. So uh we'll leave it there. <laughs> uh but no, in all in all seriousness, there's still time to order some Hero Soap Company for the holidays, sign up for a subscription. 20% off. You could literally outfit somebody with soap for the entire year. They'll get a bar every single month. Uh, Hero Soap will send it and they'll keep sending it however many bars you want. One, two, three, whatever you go through in a month in your household, they can do it. And they have a very fancy, nice box for the holiday season. And they have uh, bath wash if you don't That's like bars. Exactly. Uh, they're just phenomenal. And if you buy a bar of soap, they send a bar over to the troops and then they take a little money out of their own kick to build homes for veterans so that they don't have to worry about a mortgage after they come back fighting for our freedoms. No big deal. It's not, you know, whatever. I, you know, I get it. You're busy. You got stuff to do. But Hero Soap Company, Merca, order it up. Link in the description of this episode. And I appreciate everybody who has done so. Um, you know, it's like when I love, like when you love, like you love something, like you love, a, like let's say you love a movie, and then you tell me about it, and then I absolutely hate the movie, <clears throat> Princess, which Bride. which happens a lot. Um, you feel bad about it, but what I love is I love this, and I've been sharing it with everybody, and they're using it. Listeners are telling me, viewers, they're telling Don't me. Don't share your soap with everybody. It's that's, really great. <laughs> that's nasty. I'm gonna wash myself and send it out to somebody, and then we're just gonna keep going. We should have a contest where someone wins Anthony's used bar of soap. That, that would be lovely. Wouldn't that be nice? That would be nice. I mean, my wife doesn't even like sharing a bar of soap with me. So I, I don't blame her. I imagine that there's a, there's at least a fistful of hair wrapped around each bar of soap. Please when you're done stop with it. it. All right. Can, please. Uh, I'm just saying. You know what, Frank? That's... Uh, when I used to use Irish Spring, yes. But now that I use Hero Soap Company, the Treat hair. With care. The hair respects America so much that it gets up off the soap and puts itself uh, in the That's garbage. Some patriotic hair. That I'd like to see another soap do that. Okay, there's another reason to buy Hero Soap Company. Link Prove that it doesn't do that, folks. Yeah, yeah. I'll show you a bar of Irish Spring that doesn't do it. Those. See, uh, you know, fully clean. Give me I don't break. want to start any problems with Ireland. I'm just saying, Hero Soap Company better than Irish Spring. I'm not. Let's. It's your opinion. That's you're entitled. Yeah, nothing against Irish people, but I'm just saying, 
you know. You think Irish people are upset about that Irish Spring? You think they're like, I'm not. That's not going into you my. Do they kit. have it? Do they have it in in Ireland? Is it just called Spring? I don't know, but I know if there was an Italian Spring soap out there, I'd be like, "Where's Where's our end? Where What are I we getting?" I wouldn't out use of this? it. I don't want it. I don't <laughs> want an Italian Spring soap. To me, kind of, it would probably make me more greasy. I'm Italian. I'm allowed <laughs> to say it. Honey, what is this soap? I see. Is this, I smell like garlic. provolone all of a sudden. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is going on here? No, I, Italian spring doesn't do it for me. People be like, what's, is that provolone and garlic? Is somebody opening up? A, what happened here? Oh, that's my new soap, uh, Italian spring. It's really, uh, it's nice. <laughs> I'm clean, but I stink. I'm just saying to name a soap after an entire group of people and then and then they don't get anything out of it. I'd be a little pissed. I mean, the government of Ireland should be getting some residuals, at least some back end, some points. You think there's a you think there's a country out there that has like American, um, let's see, American zest. Like, and are, it's like, for instance, American Eagle. Don't we get a little something out of that? Don't they got to put a little on our. Uh... I mean, it's an American company. It's here, I guess. I but like, if a. If see like Irish Spring is here, right? It's an American company. I think they're global. I don't know. Yeah. See, I'm like if sure. if a company in like England made a soap called American Spring, right? Th- then I feel like they should kick a little our way. I feel like we should get a penny of every bar sold in perpetuity. One of those Shark Tank deals, you know, where they go, can I, can I get it in perpetuity? That's like always a big deal. I, I know that. They're like, I'll take a little less, but like in perpetuity, I want a dollar for the rest of my life. And then they yeah, sometimes I think they get it. They don't know what perpetuity. You know what? You know what pisses me off about Shark Tank? <laughs> that freaking show. You watch it, and unless you're a, a freaking huge success, they want nothing to do with you. Yeah. Well, how many sales have you gotten? Uh, oh, I haven't really gotten much. I'm out. Yeah. Why do you think I'm here? I'm yeah. here asking for your help. I'm not here to just become partners with whoever. I'm here because I'm struggling. Or they go, I feel like you'll be taking up too much of my time. And, and you're like, well, what, what the, I'll go to a bank then. What the fuck? You know. What am I doing here then? Why'd you, yeah. uh, you asked me to come here. Yeah. I mean, it's like, unless you have great numbers, they don't want to, you know, oh, if you, I sold 100 million last year, I'm going to sell two, 200 million this year. Oh, great. I'm in. That's, Shark- all, that's all I want. Because Shark Tank is one of those shows that should have been like four seasons and then that is it the fact that they're still doing this is like which by the way let's credit the english for this now that we're giving props around to people in england they do like three seasons or something and they are done they like that is it they do not drag a show on in england one season of the office yeah no no they did i think they did two or three no, the office, the um, English office, the English office. I think they did a couple, but they didn't go for it. I'm looking it up. But case in point, the English office was like one season, two season, three, whatever it was. The American office was like nine seasons. But I'm never we gonna. Dra- s- we drag it out, man. I'm never gonna say a bad thing about the American office. I watch all nine seasons. I love the post Michael right, Scott two. stuff just as much. It was two seasons. Yeah, two seasons. So there you go. Would we have nine, eight, or nine? And were they those English seasons? They were like ten episodes. Like here in America, we do like twenty six episodes. <laughs> 26 as long, as, as long as people show the slightest bit of interest yeah. we'll reboot it we'll you know recast everything well i don't know what the hell they call it now all right uh court papers recently revealed that um Ghislaine maxwell tied the knot in 2016 we talked about this last episode yep. now we're learning that she was about to split from her hubby scott borgerson uh when she was arrested in july Federal agents picked up Epstein's alleged madam on a six count indictment. She allegedly told pretrial services that she was in the process of divorcing her husband, wrote assistant U.S. attorney Maureen Comey, Allison Moe and Laura Pomerantz in a motion opposing her twenty eight million dollar package. Prosecutors called out Maxwell for addressing the plainly inconsistent statements in her latest statement. I don't want to rehash what we just talked about, but, um, so she was supposed to get divorced and for some reason is now still married, still married. And now he's putting up the money that I guess was hers. Like I, I, again, I don't understand why this like, like shell game of like, you take the money. It's in your, it's a trust. You, you hold the trust. 
then you transfer it to you. Now you use it for uh, my bail. I don't. I don't understand. It sounds like it's shady. I just I, can't put my finger on why it's shady. I guess if it's her money and she put it in his name, when she's arrested, the government or whoever can't take it, can't touch it because it's she gave it to him. Maybe that's it. They're putting it putting it up for her. And if she would have had it, maybe they could have frozen her assets and she wouldn't have been able to use it for that That's would make a I'm lot thinking. of sense. You know, all of her stuff is probably seized. All of her whatever property she has is uh, is under government control. I'm sure her accounts or bank accounts are frozen or whatever. So if she has money with the husband. They can't touch it. Maybe that would make that 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 would make a lot of sense. Maybe that might have been the only reason they're still married could be on paper yeah it's just an on paper thing that could be i don't know the whole thing is just all kinds of shady and you know again we'll keep our eye on it. we'll see i guess the next thing is going to be when she gets it i still kind of feel like again 30 mil that's a lot of money to fork over for bail wasn't it wait it was 25 mil then it was 28 mil now it's 30 mil right? no it was it was 20 it's always 20 i'm just saying 30 mil it's 28 and a half oh, million dollars yeah 28 and a half 22 comes from Borg Borgerson from her and then the rest of the money is coming from her brothers and uh, I think a few friends and, and stuff like that. Yeah. All right. I don't know. So it's funny because I thought we were going to really take a long breather from the Ghislaine stuff, you know, in this time. And this is all kind of like. It's drips and drabs, man. They just keep yeah. spoon feeding a little bit more, a little bit more. Uh, the, waiting for the next big bombshell. I wonder what it'll be. I think it was pretty a pretty big bombshell that she was married. I mean, that, I didn't really see that coming. But um, here's another thing I didn't see coming, and neither did Mariah. The Mariah Carey ornament. This got tweeted out today. I don't know who Kyle Blaine is, but it lit the internet on fire. Everybody started talking about it. Even Mariah herself. There's the ornament if you're uh, watching on YouTube or Facebook. I got to say, though, for a knockoff, an unofficial Mariah... The hair isn't bad. It's oh come on, man. It, it's all right. I will say this: the hair's okay. the The outfit, I feel like they nailed. That's the all the I want for nice. Christmas outfit. The, something came up there, yeah. but the outfits, the outfits, nice. The hair is nice. Uh, not much else, though. I think. But I we mean, got a little bit of an eye issue there because there's I don't know what's <laughs> happening there. She's got half a Charlie Brown face. She's got one uh, like. One's regular eye and the other eye looks like a charlie brown eye that is rough we got an eye like a pupil is detached she's got a detached retina going <laughs> who's the uh who's the hey you guys who's who's that guy sloth from the goonies <laughs> yeah <laughs> she looks That's like close. sloth from the goonies <laughs> that is close <laughs> I think she kind of looks like Sloth from the Goonies. Yeah, there you go. See now, if it played like, if it had like a button and it played some of her music. Yeah, there's a Mariah yeah, Carey ornament right that's there. Mariah Carey, right there. <laughs> she might have a couple more teeth, but you know, the hair might be a little longer. She might be not be that obsessed with Baby Ruth candy, but it's not a, it's not as terrible as it could have been. I feel like it's it's not way off. I mean, they got the outfit. I think they nailed it. I don't know. I just and the hair feel, is pretty good. I just feel like the if, eyes need work. I feel like if you block off the one good eye, it looks like Charlie Brown. That looks like Charlie Brown that to me. That's definitely Charlie Brown. <laughs> that is Peppermint Patty right there. Look, you, exactly. You can't tell that's Mariah or Charlie Brown right now. That's crazy. That is pure Peppermint Patty. <laughs> Who I am. We're going to put it side to side, all right? Peppermint Patty, Charlie Brown. Okay, we're doing a side to side. All right. Hang on. I'm going to get the right one. All I hear is dun, 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 in my head right now. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty damn close. That is pretty damn close. <laughs> <laughs> Mariah is pissed. Freaking Charles Schultz should be pissed right now. <laughs> this is bullshit. He's rolling over, man. Rolling over his grave. <laughs> They're missing out on a loss. Whoever controls the Peanuts franchise should be pissed. 
I think it's Apple at this point. I don't. I don't even know. Probably. I know they, Amazon. They, they got the rights to everything. Uh, and then Mariah, Disney. Mariah had to pop in there and tweet, "This is not approved." She had to let everybody know. <laughs> but it's the but it's the thought that counts. So <laughs> yeah. She doesn't. She's not like seeking action on it or anything. No, it's, no, no, no. It's all in good fun. I mean, you got to appreciate the that somebody makes an ornament of you. You know, I mean, that's. I nice... would be flattered if if someone made a bootleg ornament of us. Yeah unofficial we, we didn't even sign off on it that'd be that'd be hilarious be amazing i mean it'd be a little too much work to have me all nice crisp and clear and high definition and you in 1940s you know messed up wi-fi but I mean, i'm sure there's talented people out there that could that could do it someone could pull that off yeah and then i'd hire whoever made that the charlie brown one because <laughs> i'm close i'm close to charlie brown <laughs> i got the i got the huge head yeah they could, they could figure it out they could figure someone it out um, I do, I do, it is a, you know, I get it. You know, it's weird. Like Christmas has gotten out of control and I don't even care. It's weird when you love, like I love Christmas. I'm a Christmas guy all the way. I don't this care great. how out of hand it is, but it, like, let's be honest with you. Like it is ridiculous. I went to Home Depot a couple weeks ago, Frank, and I go in and you know, the inflatables that you put out like on your lawn and stuff, they had an inflatable of um Chevy Chase getting electrocuted from Christmas Vacation like the electrocuted logo. Come on, that's funny. They had an inflatable of the Christmas Vacation station wagon with the huge tree on top of it. And I've seen one of those in the neighborhood. They had an inflatable of uh Cousin Eddie's uh the RV. The RV. That's a little I mean is it actual size? It was huge. And I, I looked at it and I was like, this is awesome. I wish I could put this on my thing. And I realized in that moment, I am a massive loser. Like, I, I, this is, like, if I wasn't into it, I would be making fun of the, I would be making fun of me right now if I wasn't yeah. the one into it. But at least, you know what? That stuff, at least it's Christmas related. And it's not something like, like the Tiger King inflatable. You know, at least people aren't doing that crap. I mean, if this is, a classic Christmas movie, so that makes sense. Yeah, well, I, so I could deal with that. Tiger King. I mean, forget about it. Like that's I could not be more over all of that stuff at this point. If but, they had a, an inflatable, what's her face? What's her name? I don't even remember. Barbara Carol Baskin. Something? Carol Baskin. That would be if amazing. They had an inflatable Carol Baskin. I could see that being a, a, something stupid. I love an inflatable Carol Baskin. She's petting a tiger and her husband's shoe is hanging out of his mouth. That would you know be. The, you know those inflatables where like something pops out and then goes back in? <laughs> like the, the feet come out. It's her husband. Back in. It's her, the mouth opens and it's her husband yeah. like, help me. <laughs> and it goes back in. <laughs> Wait, why are we so full of these ideas? I don't, I don't know. know. We're just giving them away for free. I'm like, why aren't we working at the inflatable company right now? We'd be, we'd be killing it in the boardroom right now. God. <laughs> yeah, but we'd be making like, you know, 15000 a year or something. I know. We'd be getting that Irish spring deal that uh, all the Irish people have. It's just uh, another you know, good idea we're missing out on. Seriously. Uh, here they are. So everybody can see. There's the RV. You can see there the RV are. there. You see his electrocuted logo. And, of course, the uh, the, the the station wagon station looks... Wagon. I mean, it's not life size, but it's like it's close. Yeah, no, they're pretty big. I mean, they're 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 pretty big. Uh, it's pretty impressive. I, I just I think the one misstep on that is that the tree shouldn't be decorated already. But I'm just being the technical technical jerk. You know what? You're not because controversy. Let's see who gets canceled here. One is decorated, but if you look at the one above it, it's it not. Is not. Yeah. Yes, that's the way it should be. Not Look, decorated. Looks like the company that's making Mariah's is also making bootleg uh, Christmas vacation inflatables. Look out, people. Don't be sucked into the fake crap. You got to go for authentic. <laughs> that's true. Don't get scammed. If that tree's decorated. Don't get it. It's not yeah. real. But it's like, I love this. Like Christmas vacation came out in what? 80, what? Five? 88? It was in the 80s. Something like that. I'll look it up right now. And here we are in 2020 and they're they're coming out they're still coming out with product from the movie. Like that's kind of insane how that happens. It's, it's that's you know that's one of those things that 
it's just never it's a classic and it's never going away it's not going to be it's going to be something that everybody watches every year kind of like it's a wonderful life it's just not going anywhere um 1989 by the way uh i would say miracle on 34th street it's a wonderful life like held the title those two held the title from i don't I feel know like they still do whenever they came they still do, but I would argue that like Christmas Vacation is kind of on top, is more important nowadays. Well, I don't know. Maybe just because it's, you know, people like newer, you know, movies. It's a comedy. Those, those other two aren't comedies. So it's, it's, a different, it's a different deal. And you got to imagine, like, there were probably Christmas movies that came out around the time of, uh, Miracle on 34th Street and uh, It's a Wonderful Life that like went under the radar. Kind of like, you know, some stupid Santa Claus Hallmark movie thing that comes out now. I'm sure there was a movie just like that back when, uh, uh, what's it called? Miracle on 34th Street or the other one came out. And, you know, it gets zero recognition. The people that made it were like, wow, we came out that same year. Why don't we get in the, you know, they, they don't get the same recognition. Would you believe it if I told you that It's a Wonderful Life and Miracle on 34th Street came out within a year of each other? I would not believe you. Miracle on 34th Street was, came out in 47. It's a Wonderful Life came out in 46. You imagine the other movies that came out that year, the other Christmas movie. I was like, you know, I was in this movie, came out the same year as that. Yeah, nobody cares. Yeah, just long forgotten. Uh, we'll share some more Christmas uh, stuff when we have our Christmas special. On, I thought we were going to commercial. No, on the, uh, this coming when Wednesday. We I don't know what the date is. The day before the 24th, the 23rd, we'll release our Christmas That would be episode. Wednesday. Yes. And Monday, the 21st? First. Uh, Conspiracy Theory Podcast. We will do an entire episode solely talking about the craziest conspiracy theories on the internet. So... Make sure you're subscribed and tell a conspiracy theory loving friend in your life to tune in to the show and subscribe <laughs> on Monday. Should be good. Um, Don't let the men in black catch you watching that episode. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Mike Pence today announced that members of Space Force will be called Guardians. So the Guardians of the Galaxy. Is that what we're going for? <laughs> oh. God, it's just one more ridiculous thing after another. <laughs> Why don't we just call them Jedi? <laughs> What's wrong with that? As long as we're doing something stupid, we should just go all in. We're le oh. legi what I was just talking about with Christmas Vacation, we are so much farther ahead in Star Wars land that we actually have one of the biggest governments on the planet living out their Star Wars fantasy. <laughs> they're... they're their Marvel fantasy in real life. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a bit, there was a video on YouTube of a guy who made a real lightsaber. If mm -hmm. they actually brought those up with them. Oh, yeah. If they, so they can say they have lightsabers in space. Oh, yeah. Which oh, actually, yeah. now that I say it out loud, is pretty cool. Uh, today, after a year-long process that produced hundreds of submissions and research involving space professionals and members of the general public, we can <clears throat> finally share with you the name in which we will be known. Guardians. That was from the United States Space Force. Now, we now just wait call a the Avengers. <laughs> just wait a second, right? Uh, it, it uh, hundreds of submissions from space professionals and Ooh. members of the general public. Which pool do you think this name came from? <laughs> Every space well, professional is like, son of a bit. You got to be kidding me. They well, went it's not with... Spacey McSpace face, so that's good. <laughs> I mean, it's a step in the right direction, I guess. Rest in peace, Bodie McBoatface. We'll never forget you. What happened to that one? I don't is know. It, is it still around? Like, is it still called Bodie McBoatface? I think Bodie McBoatface is still out there. If you're, if you're unaware, they asked the internet to name a boat once, and the name that won was Bodie McBoatface. So that's why you can't ask the internet anything. You can't ask people, because <laughs> as a group, we're not very intelligent. No. <laughs> You get just like uh, in Men in Black, and T Tommy Lee Jones said it: "A person is intelligent; people are, I will paraphrase, are not." 
You put a bunch of them together and you get nothing but stupidity, basically. Yeah. Yeah. You get Bodie McBoatface. You get Bodie McBoatface is what you get. And Guardians. Wait, do you want to hear Pensy talking about it? Pensy McPensface? Not really, but sure. On behalf of the President of the United States to announce that henceforth, the men and women of the United States Space Force will be known as Guardians. Okay, let me tell you what annoyed me about that a little bit. Pence's the fact fate. that he could have said anything and they would have cheered no matter what what he said. No, 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 no. And, and I'm, you know me, I'm Mr. America, so I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get behind the Guardians for sure. But uh, he, he announced it a little too serious for my liking. Like you should, you should be aware. You, you know the internet exists. You should be aware people are gonna make Guardian of the Galaxy jokes. You should do it with a little wink. And a nod like that. This announcement should be made with a wink and a nod, not with a guardians. Everybody like, did we nail it? <sighs> like, look at his face. He's like, no, we nailed it. Didn't we like, come on. You got to know that this is going to be made fun of by every, every person I mean, everywhere. Uh, how many I am Groot uh, gifts <laughs> are, are, are circulating now? I will say guardians. the, the, logo is kind of cool yeah because it's already it's the the star trek logo <laughs> it's the star trek logo if you're yeah. not familiar with the star are you familiar with it actually no this this isn't the star trek logo this is and the 80s kids are going to love this reference this is turtle remember the little turtle in the middle of the old the original max they used to have remember no. he used to point it around Back before we had an arrow and there was a mouse, used to have a little turtle and it would look like... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was exactly look like that. It was in the middle of the screen. This is the Star Trek logo. Oh, it is the Star Trek logo. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, what are we doing? Come on, man. Holy crap. Somebody over at Star Trek must be be filing a lawsuit as we speak. That is the exact... They literally took the curvy lines and made them straight and (laughs) and sent it in. So we're done. Oh my goodness! We, have, we didn't even have to order Chinese food. We're not staying the night. We got it. First try. Now I will say this: if anybody is upset that we're making fun of the Guardians and Space Force, know that we were we are going to be the first people to be like, "Did you see the Space Force blew up that alien ship on the way in? Thank goodness we got one of them Space Force." Oh, absolutely. Once they become legit, <laughs> you know, a legit armed forces to be reckoned with, then yeah, I'm all in. <laughs> But we're we're not making fun of the people. No, no. We're making fun of the name and the logo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm actually That's thankful. We're fun of. Uh, you'll you'll learn on the conspiracy theory podcast. I am fully thankful we got a space force going because we need those things. We so definitely... now, you know, in the army, they're called the army. They're called soldier. They're all called soldiers. Why are they? Be, why is there a special name for the people of the space force? I don't know. I mean, going, I, why aren't they just called soldiers? I guess it's like w- astronauts, like they're called astronauts or astronauts, or, which, by yeah. the way, I think is why all the space professionals are probably pissed off at Guardians, because it's like we went from astronauts to Groot. That's basically yeah. kind of what what happened, like invent a word like astronauts. Like, did we you know somebody invented yeah. astronaut? Go at back one to point. Latin. Go back to Greek. Yeah. And, and put together a mishmash of some of those words and you'll get something cool. Wouldn't it be hysterical if when astronauts was invented, somebody was like, oh, you know, those cave drawings about the, (laughs) you know, those comic book cave drawings that we all love. Let's call them astronauts. They were called astronauts. That's what they came up. The cavemen came up with. It would be just hysterical if this was, we were sitting here going, astronauts is so classy yet. Back then they were just doing the same shit. To be honest, if you're, if first time you're hearing the word astronaut, kind of sounds weird yeah it does it's a weird word it does but i just think if they're part of like the army they're called soldiers marines they're called the marines i mean the air force is called pilots they right. should be called astronauts i guess they already so. have a word aren't they all guardians i don't know in every arm of the military they're they're, gar- they're they're all guarding us, that's for sure. They're all protecting oh, yeah. us. Yeah. It's a good point. And when the space wars begin, we'll be thankful we have the guardians 
to defend us. We are going to be so very thankful when that goes down. So Absolutely. We, we make fun, but, you know, it's, not, it's probably not a job I want. <laughs> um, second to last thing for tonight. I want to bring in some more music stuff on the show when it happens, like just cooler stuff. Because um, I dig music. What's that? I dig music. Yeah, yeah. Because I feel like we don't do we don't do music enough. Um, what do you got? It was funny before I was like going through what was trending today, and there was this there's like a rapper named Cupcake, and she's having like a rap war with somebody, and I'm like, how do you rap war with Sprinkles. Cupcake? Yeah, <laughs> with donuts. She's fighting yeah. with donuts. Cupcake first donuts. <laughs> <laughs> I can't I'm decide who cupcake. I love more, to be honest with you. I don't, you know. Yeah, that's true. But, Cupcakes are done. But I don't know if there's Tough a one. better hip hop name than Cupcake. I just love that name for a, a hip hop person. It's, it's a woman, I'm assuming. Yeah, here's this is Cupcake. Hold on. Let me get a, I'll get her picture. If it was a guy, that'd be even better. I guess so. But yeah, here's uh yeah, here's Cupcake. Look, look, she's got her like she's like Doing the whole, let me pull my glasses down and stare at you look, which I love. Classic cupcake. She's. <laughs> <laughs> it's a classic cupcake move. <laughs> no, that cupcake. She's just being all sly. She's just being cup. Cupcake's got to be cupcake. That's what I'm. Gonna, that's what I'm gonna say. How my much... rap name's gonna be Crawler. <laughs> Mine's gonna Explain. be Cronut. I'm going with Cronut to be honest. Cronut? With you. That's not bad. <laughs> I just, I don't know. I just love it. I just love that we have a rapper named Cupcake. I just, I think it's fantastic. I don't, I can't name one song. Can you, are there any, is there anything that we would know? I bet you off the top of my head, Frank, I can't, I can't say, but I, I bet you I've heard, I've heard her stuff or people Probably. have heard it and we just don't know that it's Cupcake. Like it was the same thing with Cardi B. I'd heard that song like 500 times and then I heard Cardi B, but it took me like a year to put the two of that. I was like, oh, that's Cardi B. I get it now. Now I understand. Right. That makes sense. Same thing happened with oh. Megan Thee Stallion. I, I had the same thing there. I got you. But Megan Thee hey. Stallion and Cupcake, this is like, I mean, I, hip-hop is winning the, the name. Let's just put it this way. Hip-hop 2, Space Force 0. As far as naming big things go shade. this year, yeah, it's a big fat it's a big fat donut, for lack of a better uh, term there. Cupcake. But, gotta love Cupcake. Gotta love Cupcake. Anyway, uh, we're not talking about Cupcake's new music, uh, unfortunately, but we're talking about Ringo Starr. Ringo Starr dropped a new uh, single today. I listened to it. Okay. You know, it's, Thoughts? It's good for Ringo Starr. I'm listening. I'm never going to talk bad about Ringo Starr. He was the... Is it classic Ringo or is it like new? He's singing. He's on drums. He's probably not on drums. Yeah, I don't think he really drums that much anymore. Listen, I love Ringo. Ringo was the worst songwriter in a group of four people that had three of the best songwriters ever. Like to be fair, anybody who's in that band, no matter who you got, you're gonna pale in comparison yeah. to the rest of them. Yeah, I mean, I just agree. I, there's there you you couldn't. You, I mean, Yellow Submarine, Octopus's Garden. I know, it, it, but I, I'm not one of these people that shits on Ringo. I like Ringo. It's just love Ringo. I saw him live. He was great. He was actually on drums when I saw him live. It was, it couldn't have been more than eight years ago. Nice. And he was great. Yeah, that's the thing. It's I, like, I love, like, I'm, I wouldn't, by the way, I wouldn't bring it up if I didn't think it was good, but it's Ringo good, if that makes sense. That is good. Ringo that good sense? is better than, than we'll ever get, I think. Yeah, well, agreed. Uh, totally agree there. Yeah, it's just, it's Ringo good. Um, It's not like, you know, Paul McCartney good, but Paul Ringo good is still great. It's right. Exactly. I would take Ringo good over a lot of other, you know, over a lot of other people, like you said. But um, it, what I love about it is the um, supporting cast that he has on the track. Cause like I said, he's got Paul McCartney. So again, I'm like super intrigued because this is, that's the Beatles. That's it right there. We don't have John. We don't have George. So whenever the two remaining Beatles get together, I'm all in. I'm down for it. Uh, right. It's got Paul. It's got Dave Grohl on it. This is all off his new EP called Zoom In. Get it? Because of the year. Photograph and, and so Zoom In. Nice. Yeah, because of the year. So um, it's McCartney, 
Grohl, Joe Walsh, Lenny Kravitz, Corinne Bailey Ray, Billie Eilish, Sheryl Crow is on there. Um, um, just to take a step back for a second. Imagine yeah. being Billie Eilish, who's what? I don't even know, 18, 19, 20, something like that. Super young, yeah. And you're instantly, you're just rocketed to the top and you're singing with, now you're singing with the Beatles. Yeah. It's just, you, her mind's got to be blown. Got to be blown. Sick. It doesn't get much bigger than that. Sick. At 20 or where, however she, old she is. That's, I mean, to peak at 20. <laughs> that's. A, <laughs> I, I'm not saying she peaked. She's probably got, you know, decades in front of her that are going to be great. But to hit something that high, to sing with the Beatles at 20 is incredible. It really is incredible. You're right. It, it really, really, it's got, that's got to be mind blowing for her. Like, Outside of whoever she probably grew up idolizing, you know, outside of whoever her favorite artist is of all time, because I'm mm -hmm. sure it wasn't the Beatles. This is like that. That's the only thing that's going to beat this for her. Yeah. I mean, your favorite band in the world doesn't have to be the Beatles, but I'm sure, and especially being a musician, you would know that the Beatles are the legends. They're tops. It's just I mean, it's Beatles, Rolling Stones and a handful of others that maybe are close, but those are the top. It's Beatles, Rolling Stones, but I gotta say, it's in that order for me. Like, that's the mm -hmm. order, Beatles, Rolling yeah. Stones. You and know? They, Pink Floyd, Zeppelin, you know, that kind of stuff. But that's classic rock too. I mean, there's all different yeah. genres, but. Yeah. No, forget you know. it. Could you imagine you get that phone call from Ringo and it's like, I want you to come and sing on my album or something like that, like. Like, you. You got the wrong number, buddy. Sorry. Like that, that I, I don't even, I don't know if the rest of us mortals will know what that feels like. Ever. No, we definitely won't. Why yeah. would we? And it, I mean, that's the Beatles calling you up and saying, sing with me. To be in that room. I remember when Dave Grohl, Dave Grohl had McCartney come in and they did a song together. And, um, you know, he was like, he was, this was just a few years ago. So Dave Grohl was Dave Grohl. You know, he had already been Dave Grohl. Actually, it was Dave Grohl. It was, it was Nirvana. It was Dave Grohl. It was Pat Smear. It was Chris Novoselic. And, and instead of Kurt, obviously, it was Paul McCartney. And they were all jamming. And Dave Grohl was like looking over at the rest of the guys and he was losing his mind. And this was him 25 years into making music and being a legend of his own right, still freaking the F out over Paul McCartney. And you want to know what was cool about that story? Paul McCartney was the one who looked around and said, wow, have you guys played together since, you know, and they were like, no, that was the first time like Nirvana kind of had a legit reunion. And it was with Paul filling in for Kurt Cobain doesn't get much better than that, man. No, that's I love that story. That's like a super cool story. Uh, but anyway, uh, here's to the nights is out right now. Link is in the description below. We're obviously not going to play it for copyright, you know, because that whole thing. But yeah. um, I'm not going to sit here and tell you it's the greatest song I ever heard. But if you're a music fan and you love Ringo and you love the Beatles, you love Photograph, you know, you love all of his, like you said, sure, Yellow Submarine. You, this is going to be right down your alley. It's going to be right down your pipe. And it's cool to hear Cheryl on it. And like you said, Billy Eilish, it's, that's a really sweet thing. It's a really, really nice it's got thing. A to ton get. of cool people in there. I, and, and that's the thing too. I love like Lenny Kravitz and Joe Walsh and McC I, I love that. I wish we can get more of this kind of fantasy camp lineup stuff. You know, we need, remember, musicians. um, we are the world. Yeah. We all got together. We yeah. need more of that kind of stuff. We do. We really, really I mean, do. That was, that was legendary. That was classic. And get them all together. Start making compilations and, you know, start working together instead of all these. I mean, all these individual albums are great, but more collaborations would be great. Why not? I, I love And Paul Paul's a real genius at this, too. I love it when the older generation taps into the younger generation. And Paul's mm. been doing that stuff since, you know, you look at Michael Jackson and that whole collaboration and right up till Kanye and Rihanna a couple of years ago. And now he's involved in this thing like still going, man. He's still got it. But you know what happens, though? Why I love it so much is all the young kids that love Billie Eilish are now going to figure out who Paul McCartney and Ringo Starr are. 
and yep. all the all the Ringo Starr, Paul McCartney fans are going to have something to talk about their grandkids and their niece and nephews with. Ah, uh, connecting the generations. <laughs> Gotta yeah. love it. It's remember, kind of... uh, I remember when Paul McCartney and um, and Kanye and when they did their thing, and there was uh, this whole thing of um, I don't know if it was a joke, but uh, people were saying, "Oh, this, this it's, it's nice of Kanye to invite this guy to come sing with him," and it was like treating it like Paul McCartney wasn't a huge legend. Yeah, you know, and they were like, "Oh, who's this guy? He's he's pretty good." You know, I think it was on Twitter or something, but I felt like Kanye kind of mistreated him a little bit because Dude, what do you mean? As this well, as the story goes, Paul went there. He invited him over. He's like, do you want to come and play? And Paul was like, OK. And so he came over and they started. Pl- he Paul started playing something and just kind of like singing along. And they hung out for a couple of hours and that's basically what they did. And he just recorded Paul doing a bunch of like he had like the the record going like, you know, the recording him and they were just talking and he would sing and he would be like, oh, this thing, like, check this out, blah, 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 play a little bit, sing, do whatever. What do you think about that? Oh, OK, this is that. And then Paul said he just got a tape like months later or like a year later or whatever it was. He just got a tape. and He's like, here you go. And he had taken what he did and he like sped it up and he only used like one lyric or one one thing that he said, and he had even sped that up. So it was kind of like it was kind of like show me what you got, and then Kanye did his thing, and then like was just like here you go. It wasn't I don't know. Like I feel like if I had Paul McCartney, I'd be like, what do you want to do? Like let's yeah figure this out together. And, and I'm not messing with it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm not gonna touch it. Yeah. You do what you gotta do, and it's gonna be great. So let's yeah. go. Yeah, not like you do. Okay, thanks a lot. And then go and remix it and speed it up and do whatever. I mean, that's a ballsy you can bring move. Bring almost anybody in for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't yeah. need McCartney for that. Yeah, exactly. Like, that's what it's like. You could barely even tell it was McCartney. You know, really. Yeah, that's so not yeah. cool. You know, to each his own, I guess. Um, maybe that's what makes Kanye so great. Uh, Mandalorian. Yes. I've been ignoring okay, so it, but I, it's all over the internet. It's bringing Star Wars back to true fans. You know, it's, it's one by of the way, things. I'm sorry. Yeah. No spoilers here. Frank's going to give you something with, with no spoilers. So you don't have to tune I'm in. I'm not going to spoil anything. This was the um, season finale, second season. Uh, the finale was today, it got released today on uh, Disney Plus. You watch it already? And it was incredible. Yeah, it, it was it blew everything away. It, the rest of the season was, was was great. Every episode led up to stuff, and it was all cool. And you know they would call back to different things in the movies. Um, but this episode, it was like forty something minutes, and it was just from start to finish was amazing. It was one of those things where you see when you see the movies, and you get like a re- you know when you're watching a movie and you just like yeah. that for like you forget to blink for like 10 minutes. Yeah. That's what this episode was. And it's not, you know, I think when they started out, it wasn't, I'm not saying it was cheap. It wasn't cheap at all, but it was a little less, uh, than, um, uh, like the effects maybe a little, were a little less than what they were, what they are now. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Okay. So, so now we're at the end of season two and just what they did with it keeping in mind where it falls in the whole genre and the whole timeline, it was perfect. You know, I don't want to give away what perfect is pretty high praise. I mean, you know, it's only a 40 something minute thing. It's not a movie. It's not a, you know, it's one episode of a series. How many episodes were in this year? Uh, 12, I believe. Oh, wow. So that's, that's significant. That's pretty big. Yeah, no, it was, it wrapped up the season nicely and just the whole connection into the Star Wars universe. It's a lot of stuff that you're going to watch and you go, holy crap. My dream is, is that one season they will literally just take a season of The Office and make it in The Mandalorian. And like that'll be the whole season. Like, I think that would be amazing if they did that. If they just literally, like, they change names. It's not Jim and Pam. It's the Star Wars people. But it's like a whole episode of the, a whole season of The Office. How awesome would that be? 
<laughs> so anyway, as I was saying, the Mandalorian. All right, but let me say this. It, let me say this. I feel like people freaked the F out for season one and were super excited about it. Then I feel like there was a freak out episode one, season two. Everybody was like blown away. And now you're saying they've topped it. Are, are you saying that they've they've been they've just topped topping themselves? All previous episodes. I mean, wow. a couple, a few episodes ago, and this isn't spoiling anything. Can I can I give can I say something that was revealed a few episodes ago? I mean, I like to go. I'm going to take my headphones out. You wave at me when you're done. Go ahead. I can't hear you. Go ahead. Well, you don't you don't care. No, wait. Come back. Come back. Come back. Come back. Put the headphones back in. Is that what you're saying? Say it. Yes. Say say it. Say it. All right. So this is something that happened a few episodes ago. I could say it. Say whatever it was. Go ahead. The return of Boba Fett was a huge deal. It was amazing. This is not the return of Boba Fett, but it is incredible. What happens without giving anything away is incredible. That's all I'm going to say. It beats, it beats out everything that happened in previous episodes. Back on. Okay. I couldn't hear any of that. I, See, spoil, I, like to, I, I got to go in cold. Anything. I got to go in cold as hell. I can't. I know that wasn't a spoiler, but I got to. I'm going in as cold as hell. That's why I've been ignoring all those things I'm seeing online, but I'm seeing a lot of stuff. It's online. hard, man. It's hard to because I, I watched it this morning. It was released at midnight. I watched it this morning. But before I watched it, you know, I, I was scrolling through Twitter and boom, spoiler. I was like, oh, come on. Yeah, you can't. You, you got it. You can't. It's been released for a few hours, not even a whole day. And there, it's everywhere. I when, should be a law against it. When House of Cards came out, same thing. It came out at midnight. I didn't. I had a day and a half. I went dark side of the moon, man. I I turned off Twitter. I turned off notification. I turned off everything. I wasn't answering text you messages. Gotta you got to do it. So this episode was a little. This episode was spoiled for me a little bit, but it's still even that. Even though it was spoiled for me, was still amazing. Are episodes a half hour or an hour? Usually a half. A, Around a half hour. Usually a half an hour. I didn't lose you there, by the way. You were on the whole time. So I don't know if you... Uh, oh, all right. So I end. thought my uh, video um, froze on me. So wow, I wonder if I can get through that during the holiday break. Because I, I got a break here coming up. And I, I have time to... I have time... I, have I mean, so, if you... I got to pick one thing. You have thing. to know... This takes place after the... Like, the, in the timeline of the whole Star Wars saga. All right, I don't care. This, the but the listen, Mandalorian takes place after Return of the Jedi before the force awakens i don't really know what that means but uh, this is what i want to say to you this is what i want to get from you for the star wars fans out there mm -hmm. it feels like the last few movies i would even go back to episodes one two and three that for the most part they're well received but you have that like 40 percent of the audience maybe it's 30 percent, and it varies every single time that have an issue with what's going on in the film. Whereas yep. I feel like this Mandalorian has everybody united on one side saying, this is amazing. Is that, do you find that to be true? That's, I see that. Yeah, that I agree with that. I haven't seen anything negative about the Mandalorian. I haven't seen any reviews that have, I, I mean, this, this thing down. I'm sure people are saying negative stuff on Twitter. I'm sure there's like, that's, you're never going to, but you know, I haven't seen it. Like Jesus can come back and give everybody a billion dollars and somebody would be like, does he have to wear sandals? Like, like that's just Twitter. That's but, true. You can't please everybody. But I'm saying for the most part, like 99.99% is across the board. People are loving this show more so yeah. than I feel the movies. It's up there, man. It's because uh, I don't know if it's Favreau or, or what, but the people creating this know what they're doing and they're not holding back. They're taking, not that they're taking liberties, but they're, they're not uh, take, they're taking a lot of chances and they're paying because off because they're messing. Yeah. They're paying off because they're messing with star Wars. I mean, not messing with it, but they're, they're using star Wars as you know, the, the foundation for this move for this show. Mm. So you have to handle it delicately. Yeah, you know you can't mess with the, the the canon, so you have to play within that field, and they're doing it, I think, perfectly. I think it is Favreau. I think the guy is a genius, and if I can give myself a little credit here, 
Uh, I've, I've been on the guy from day one. I've been a fan, and I th thought he was amazing. When a lot of other people... That's great. Didn't appreciate his mean? genius when, uh, you know. What are you talking about? Wait. I was Come on, I was talking about swingers for years and years, and everybody was like, this guy in this you movie. You got me swing. to watch swingers, and I liked it. Did you like swingers? Yeah. All right, maybe Janine's a shithead. The first I, time I, I saw it, you, you, you said watch swingers, and I watched it, and I thought it was good. I forget which one of the two of you I can't stand more. It fluctuates, to be honest, and it's hard to keep track. But for the most part, I feel like I was in so early on Favreau and not a lot of people were really with me on that. I liked him in Rudy. Small part, but he was good. He was great in Rudy. He was <laughs> He's awesome so little. By the way, Mandalorian does not happen if not for Rudy. It, everything that Favreau touches all comes from Rudy. And I'll tell you why. Because Favreau met Vince Vaughn on that movie. Vince Vaughn is in that. Vince Vaughn is in Rudy too. He plays one of the football players. They met. Mm -hmm. They got to talking. That's how swingers happen. That's how made happen. And then everything else that Favreau got, he got off of those those things. Because Favreau got those things off. He got Elf off of those things. And then when Elf was a hit, everybody was coming up to talk to him, and and it, and he was off to the races. And let's be oh, honest, Favreau though, can't miss now. At Not this point, yeah. At this point, he launched the Marvel franchise by directing Iron Man, Iron Man Two, and writing some of it on the fly as they were making it. And now he's messing with with um, with uh, Star Wars, and you kind of felt like J.J. Abrams was the heir apparent. And now it's kind of like maybe Favreau is to kind of take some of these things into the yeah, future. Abrams directed. And Favreau, I think, is also writing and creating all this stuff. He's more of a and creator. He's got a huge writer. hand in it. Yes, yes. JJ writes too. He does. He's written some some killer okay. stuff. But but I don't Favreau, know if he wrote. I don't know if he was in on the writing with Star Wars. I'm not 100 percent sure. I don't know. You you might. Yeah, that I don't know. I can't comment on. But if, I know JJ has written stuff. But um, mm. oh yeah, sure. But Favreau is like. I mean, at this point, like. Uh, you know, come on, like, you know, Favreau might He's be the man. The, he might be the guy to start directing some of these Star Wars movies and writing some of them and, and stuff. Bring like it that. on. I'd love, you know, if he was, I don't know who's working on Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan Kenobi is the series that they, they're starting to film in March. Right. Okay. I heard with, that. Uh, with Ewan McGregor. Yeah. I hope he's involved. I don't think he is, but I, if he were involved, I'd be very happy. I don't know who's working on that. But that that's going to be huge. He's just so I I rewatched Chef again. Chef is on I Netflix. Haven't seen Chef. You haven't seen Chef? No. Watch Chef. So, I mean, it hey, is. A, I'm in. Love Favreau. It's a food porn extravaganza. That movie. It really is. There is. a lot of eating. Like, is there a lot of chewing? Uh, no, no. There's not a lot of chewing, but there's a lot of close-ups on the food cooking and like the sizzling That's and all fine. that kind I like of stuff. That. That's good. Oh, it's so good. And then That's at the end, obnoxious. at the end of the chef, when the child shows up, I mean, blows you away. It just the whole thing really just all comes together. <laughs> you jerk. I want points from people in the comment section because I called it the child and not Baby Yoda. Okay, I care. I care about the. Well, Star there's Wars a one. hey. I no nope, can't spoil it for you. Never mind. Yeah, don't spoil it. Don't I was spoil, it now. spoil it again. So it would have my spoil would have taken your points away. But <laughs> I'm not going to do that to you. Um, there is still time to order your uh, show me potato salad or Anthony on air paraphernalia. This is the I award you no know points. So if you have an Adam Sandler fan in uh, in your life, I award you no know points. And may God have mercy on your soul. That classic line from it's a good uh, one. Billy, was it Billy Madison? This is Billy from? Madison. Yeah. Yep. Um, please don't sue us, Adam. Uh, Which I think they're making a second one. Easton talks about making a sequel. Are they really? It's, I heard about it. I don't know how true. I, you know, you scroll through stuff and you see a little thing, a little blurb about it. Yeah. So I'm not sure. You know what's crazy? I feel like COVID knocked us off the Hollywood game a little bit. Like we weren't really getting a lot of news. Matrix Four is coming out in 2021. We're getting another Matrix movie. There's and there was another sequel that kind of blew my mind that we were getting too. So I wouldn't be surprised if oh, we're getting Spider Man Three, but it's gonna have like every it's gonna have Tobey Maguire, 
It's going to have um, uh, what's the guy's name that played Doctor Octopus in that one. It's going to have a lot of people from the Tobey Maguire spot in this one. Is going to be in this one? Yeah, it's going to be the new uh, Holland. Tom Holland. Yes, is the I new Spider Man. So. Yeah, it's going to be his movie, but they're going to have. I might be like a multiverse kind of thing, like a you know different dimension Spider Man kind of thing. That would be so. Cool. I think, and I think, what's his name is going to be the two, the guy. Uh, that was Spider Man in the middle of both of them. Uh, I forget his name. There was a Spider Man in between those. In between Tobey Maguire and Tom Holland was, uh, of course, they're going to grill me in the comments for this, but I forget his name. Eric Bana. He was in. No, there were two movies he made, and I can't remember what what his name was. He's going to be in it. Uh, what's his name is going to be in it? The guy who played um, the newspaper guy. Oh, the guy who yeah 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 the he's in it and Tobey Maguire's one he's good I like mm-hmm. him he's in the farmers commercials we are right. farmers Andrew Garfield Andrew Garfield is the second Spider Man yeah I forgot about all of those there was a lot of Spider Man yeah. movies there were but he's gonna be in it and it's gonna be I don't know what the story is obviously but they're making a Doctor Strange two and the Doctor Strange two movie. Is a, is going to be something about the multiverse? So I think that's all going to tie in. Um, we have more Spider-Man movies per capita than any other any other place. It's amazing. Hey, I think it's it's about time we get a new Spider-Man. I mean, who's going to play him next year? I don't know. I'll do it if they need me to. I mean, I'm there. The thing is, uh, is if, if like you got an up and coming actor that like can play Spider-Man, like you never have to worry about being out of work because there's always going to be something. You. Hey, did you see Tom Tom Holland is a great he he's, you see him like do the red carpet stuff and photo shoots. Every now and then he'll do he'll just stand there and do a backflip. He's just like like a lot of that stuff is him. Really? Yeah, he's he does it he commits, man. That's kind of crazy. I haven't seen any of his, but I really I really really should. Really? Oh, they're good. Yeah. Michael yeah. Keaton is in the first one. We should maybe put together a list for the Christmas special of like stuff to watch. Yeah, like stuff we should, to, to ride out the the winter. We should throw out like three or three to five of our like top picks, movies, streaming, search, like shows, whatever. Like here's our picks for for what to watch over the break if you got time off. I'm in. Yeah, maybe we'll do that. I'll come up with a list. All right, cool. Um, so programming note again: next Monday, next episode that you'll hear or watch will be our conspiracy theory show, uh, which we've written actually, and 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 uh, it, we put a lot of effort into just doing the craziest conspiracy theories on the internet. So uh, stick around for that, and again, spread the Special word. Special that, guest that's we're gonna have too. Yeah, uh, Tim. Tim actually, uh, who's been working on our uh, a uh, our clips channel, is gonna join us for that, which is uh, great. I wonder if people will think Tim is as cracked out as Janine. Or not? Let us know in the comments of that episode if you're like this guy is less meth heady than Janine is. Like, I just just to rank it. I don't know. Maybe sli- maybe slightly. It's fun. Um, and then uh, next Wednesday we'll do uh, our Christmas special, um, where we'll have uh, some fun stuff planned for that, and we'll talk all Christmassy stuff, and it'll be nice. Love it. It'll be something for people to listen to if they're traveling on Christmas Eve or going to family Christmas Day or uh, whatever they're doing there. So we'll do that. Don't forget to subscribe here to the. For you. Yeah, we're here for exactly. We're we're gonna spend the holidays together. Damn it, we're gonna be borrowing sugar and yelling at you and stuff and feel I'll like you're sleep on the couch. Maybe we'll take a nap in the middle of the show. <laughs> See, not enough people take nap in the middle of their podcast. <laughs> I should... think we could we could start a trend. We should start a napcast where you just you tune in. There we are, Ooh. just taking a snoozer. I like it. I'm in. <laughs> we'll be the only ones. I mean, if there's a pod, there's literally a podcast for everything. I don't know if there's a podcast for napping. We'll have to find Trailblazers out. is what they'll call us. Word up. Word up. Um, all right. So those are the next couple of episodes. Don't forget to subscribe to our, our clips channel. There's always a link in the description below. By the way, I, I love everybody and I will always write everybody back. But the amount of people that are like, where's the link for that? Where's It's in the description. It is always in the description. Right below the video, there's a little, probably a little arrow. Yes. Pointing up. Yes. Click it. It'll point down and everything will open up. 
Everything is in there. We're not doing timestamps as much as I'd like to. I try and do them whenever we can, but everything else is in there for the most part. Um, I had some guy complain to me. There, some guy was like, your show sucks. I, I never hear the Ghislaine stuff that you put in the title. I told you I was sorry about that. <laughs> I'm like, guy, it's see how the title is in order? That's how the show goes. There's no, it's no mystery. It's not the Da Vinci Code. It's here's the shit Plus, we're talking about, and it's in that order. Yeah. If you skip around, you'll hear what we're talking about. It's not yeah. a huge mystery. Just get the context. Of, you know, listen for two seconds. You'll hear what we're saying, and go backwards or forwards. It's and, cool. and by the way, so many people stick around after the Ghislaine stuff, and they're like, this stuff is so much better. And yeah, because it's not depressing. The other stuff that we talk about, it's like fun and lighthearted stuff. So yeah, we try to we try to lift your spirits a little bit. A little bit as we can. Um, and then what else? Uh, the merch links are below as well, uh, whether you're listening or watching on Facebook or YouTube. And that's everything there. Uh, grab your hero soap. Appreciate you guys when you support them. You're supporting the podcast, of course, and you're supporting our troops, which is a win, 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 as Michael Scott would say. Anything else there, Frankie C? Uh, no, watch The Mandalorian. It's awesome. The Frankie C. endorsement. There you go. Watch The Mandalorian. And if Janine were here, she would say something about meth, I'm sure. So, uh, you know. But don't do drugs, kids. <laughs> now I got to read all the comments. Why is the guy, all he does is make faces? I don't get it. Why is he even there? Hey, I only did it for the end. Not the whole thing. <laughs> All right, uh, that's it for us. Uh, enjoy yourself. We appreciate you watching, and uh, we'll see you a couple more times before the Christmas holiday.